Hey guys, Rocket Rob here, and I'm back. I finally got a new computer after stupidly breaking my old one, but we're back and I can make videos again, so yay. So, today I've got the launch of a new series called Top 5 of a Type. So basically, in this uh, series that we're gonna be focusing on, each episode will have a different type and I'm gonna go through the top five figures in that type. But before I get into that, we've got some other news. As you can see behind me, I've got the Australian flag featured on display. It's gonna be up there flying as long as Australia remain in the Pokemon Duel World Cup. So for those of you who have not registered yet, who have still been thinking, who have ignored all my other warnings to sign up, do it today. We've got one week left and we want to get as many countries into this World Cup as possible and make it the biggest event in Pokemon Duel history. So far, we have 99 people who have joined the World Cup, which is super awesome. We currently have confirmed countries playing. Australia, the best country. Uh, we have India, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Peru, and the United States of America as well. We have the UK, we need two more members to play a team. Uh, Malaysia has got three away. Chile only needs one more player to form a team. Brazil needs three as well. There's a few other countries there as well. If players, if the countries don't get enough players to form a team, we will be merging them together so that there will be enough. But register now, right now. I'm gonna put the link in the description, so do it today. Don't wait any longer. We want as many people in this as possible so that we can have the best and biggest tournament ever. There's gonna be a real trophy. I showed the image of what the actual trophy looks like. I'm gonna be ordering it next month when the trophy store reopens. This is still on Christmas break. Lucky bums. But we are going to have yeah, a trophy prize as well as a special prize for the MVP of the tournament. That prize will be announced later. Okay, now let's get into the episode. As you can see, I'm focusing on ghost types today. So, I'm going to begin with number five. And this, I've got to say, Ghost was really hard to come up with. I don't know why I started with it. It's because I'm running Ghost a lot lately and I'm just like, ah, I'm really into Ghost. But you know what? There's a lot of really, really good Ghost figures. So this was a really, really hard call. So I'm gonna show you first up is my number five, fifth best Ghost figure in the game, according to myself, and that is Mega Bennett. This is an absolute beast. It has three MP and a huge, huge curse, right? Look at this curse. It's absolutely huge. Especially once you level that up. As far as you can go, I think most people probably level it up to level 5 because at level 5 it has zero miss, but I would recommend leveling up that curse as far as we go. It is at an absolute weapon. This figure's knockoff is hitting for at least 140, but don't forget, it's also getting the damage buff for every time that a Bennett has been knocked out, or a Mega Bennett, I believe, as well. Um, sorry, each of your Bennett and Shuppets, which still counts because Bennett devolves before it gets knocked out. Um, so it's getting an extra 10 damage for each time it's been knocked out, plus it's buffing itself for 20, so yeah, it's hitting for at least at least 140 because it gets the 10 for the Evo as well. So there you go, that is absolute weapon. It's got a two star curse by the way, because you get the Evo, you get the extra star on the curse, and that Shadow Sneak is pretty good as well. It's always good landing that, you usually get a knockout off that as well. It, it's, it's a great figure, I've got to say. Obviously, you'd run it most likely with the EX Bennett, not with the Rare in most cases, although there have been some great decks I have seen running the Rare Bennett as well, but we're not gonna feature on that one so much today. This figure's really great. I run it, and I've got three of them in my deck, as many of you probably know. I think it's a really good figure. Next up, we have and I don't know, some people might argue this should be higher, I'm not sure. But in number four, I have Decidueye. And I love this figure. I don't run it, 
but it is great. It is one. It is definitely the best Zemu ghost figure. You've got the grass, uh, grass like typing there as well. So it's getting the I forget what you call the um, grass Zemu. What do you call it? Bloom Doom, which basically can remove all status effects from your own figures once you use it, which is really really good. Uh, this thing is hitting. Fairly hard, fairly hard. It's not a massive, like, top-tier hit-up, but, you know, the Spirit Shackle's hitting for 120. The Phantom Arrow is a really solid gold attack, and that takes up a lot of the wheel there. And the Grass Knot can really knock out some of those big hitters as well. Not only that, but when you bring it onto the field, every opposing figure on an entry point must spin, and if they hit purple, they're knocked out as well. This is a really great figure. Those Z moves right now are dominating the meta, and uh, that's why you're seeing a lot more of Decidueye lately. So that's why Decidueye, for me, is placed in number four. Now, I'm not sure what you guys are gonna think of this one, but let me show you the reason why I have picked EX Binet as my number three. A lot of you are probably thinking, why? Well, have a think about this, okay? What's going on with the meta right now? There are a lot of Z moves, okay? And this figure counters Z moves. The Destiny Bond will knock out the opposing figure if this Pokemon is knocked out as well. So, basically, if anyone uses Z move, it's a, they have to hit it on knockoff to get a, you know, to get a winning spin. Um, the Imprison there is going to make any of their attacks become miss of the one that they spun. So basically that can really, really devastate um, a figure that relies on one particular segment of their wheel. The knockoff is great as well. You basically can knock off opposing plates. I did forget to mention that the, um, that the Mega also has this as well. Uh, basically, if you hit this on an opposing figure, it will remove one of their active plates. Uh, I think it's just the plate that's active on the... No, yeah, it, it, one of this Pokemon's battle opponents in use plate. So if, it, it basically can knock off the spear off the opposing figure that you attack. So that's how that works. Um, which is really great. It's getting that 10 attack damage for every Binet that's knocked out as well, or up it. Um, so, yeah, that, oops, that is a really, really solid figure. Uh, it has zero miss at level five. So for me, in a meta that's dominated by Z moves, this figure is right up there in number three. Not only because of what I said, but also because if you attach it with its Mega, it can be sitting there, even if you don't transfer it into Mega, you don't evolve it, it is a threat. Your opponent must make sure that you can't reach their goal within three moves. It's, it's basically just, it can threaten the goal at any point, because at any time it could just evolve. So that's why I put EX Binet in number three. Okay, we're getting to the end now. Number two, and I think this one's going to be pretty popular. It's in most decks. We have Marshadow. Now, Marshadow is, in my opinion, the number one runner in the game. It has taken over Tapu Koko for sure. And this is why. Because every opposing figure is going to deal 20 less damage if any ghost type is near it. So this thing is buffing the entire team. It's not only on its own turn, it's both players' turns. Um, so basically, while this Pokemon is on the field, opposing Pokemon deal minus 20 damage for each of your Ghost-type Pokemon adjacent to them. So that could mean, you know, if you've got two, it could be 40 damage that it could um, reduce by, potentially. Now, uh, that means that basically, Spectral Thief is hitting for, realistically, it's hitting for 90 and Shadow Sneak is realistically hitting for 50 there. Once again, like a lot of these ghost type figures, there's zero miss at level five as well, which is great. The only weakness, and look, it is a fairly big weakness now, but I think this figure still shines through and there's a reason to most decks, but pretty much any Z move is gonna knock this thing out. That is a bit of a problem. So, I mean, yeah, I still think it is essential in a, in a lot of decks because 
Look, one, one thing I didn't mention as well is with a mighty spear, you can be getting all of your opponent's figures taken into your own PC with surrounds, and this guy can get surrounds like that. It's very well set up for that. Three MP figure that can move through Pokemon. Great, great, great. But yeah, that is its weakness. The the Z moves kind of have uh, cooled it off a little bit, but you still see it in every deck, pretty much, right? Now, number one, it's not going to be a surprise. We have Rifblim. Rifblim, in my opinion, is definitely the number one ghost type figure. It has a huge attack at 130 Shadow Beam, which will turn the battle opponent's purple attacks to misses in the next battle as well, but it probably will get a knockout in a lot of cases anyway. Um, you've got Hex, which if the opponent is affected by a special condition, it's going to be doing hitting for 200. It's going to be hitting really hard. But the big thing on this figure's wheel is that takeaway and, you know, looking at, if you get that to level 10, that's like 42 out of 96. That's pretty much close to half the wheel hitting for that takeaway. And, you know, bringing your opponent's figures into your PC, it basically gives you a huge opportunity because you're going to be, basically, you're turning that whole momentum around. You'll have five figures on the field while your opponent will only have three. You can really, after a takeaway, you can rush up to your opponent's end of the field and start dominating those entry points and really put pressure on the opponent. And this thing is just unstoppable. If you do that twice, if you've got two of your opponent's figures in your PC, you have a six on two advantage. So in my opinion, there's no debate on the number one ghost type figure. Drifling. But let me know what you think. Do you agree with my assessment? Do you have a different list? Did I miss any Pokemon off the list? Like I said, there was a lot of figures that are good in ghost types, so it's hard to come up with this list. I'd love to hear your opinions. Please leave your comments below and let's have a discussion. But for the now, this is Rocket Rob blasting off again. I'll see you in the next one when we do a new type. Bye.